Phil Burt is a physiotherapist and a leading bike fitter. He's featured in a number of GCN videos and GCN Plus documentaries, and while working together, he mentioned that one of the most common issues he sees is riders who are worried that they've bought the wrong size of bike. So how do you tell and what do you do about it? Okay, Phil, yep. this is me. Yep. This is my bike. Yep. What are the warning signs that I might have bought the wrong size? Normally for me, the biggest warning sign is that somebody is running a very, very short stem or very, very long stem. So I would say less than 90 is yep. generally starting to get into short and territory uh, because the way bikes are designed geometry and how they handle, you know, the, basically most manufacturers have got about 90 to 140. More than 140, you're getting into, you, you lengthen that stem out to make the bike fit. You need that length, but that's actually getting quite far out over the end. It can become dangerous because of okay. handling, you know. Um, the other thing is when you see stems inverted, you know, have they not got the right? So this is a Canyon Air Road. You're still flexible enough. I'm not. I would not be able to ride this stack. But you know, the modern endurance bikes basically build in a stack here so that we can arrive at a position, a contact point here that's much easier to, for us to get to. You know, and if you see a massively inverted stem. However, I think if you want me to dive into, most of the time people think, have I got the wrong bike? And that what they haven't considered is have they optimized the contact points for themselves. So, to give you a really good example, a lot of people come in and say, this bike just feels miles away, and they've been shortening the stem up, and they're up to 80, and the setback's at minus 120. Okay. Like, we're lose that. That's like sitting in the outdoor room there, you know? It's okay. massively far back. So how far forward or backwards your saddle is exactly. on the seat Because if it makes, that makes it, where you're sitting makes a massive a difference to how far the front end of the bike feels away, you know? So if you're sitting really low or far back, the bike might feel huge. I've sold people's back pain and they had low back pain come in and said, I'm on the wrong size bike. And all they did was they had the wrong saddle nose up, which has forced them to sit back there. Had to do all this from here because they're not allowed to flex the lumbar spine because the, well, they have to do all the flexing of the lumbar spine. And now you literally move them up and forward and tilt the saddle, they can't believe it. It makes a demonstrative difference to comfort if that is wrong and then it's optimized. Okay, so the first step would be get your saddle height sorted. Yeah and then you worry about all the other I always start points. with the engine room, get the saddle height right, then get the fore aft right, and then worry about what the front end feels like then, right? But once that's right, and if you think you're falling in with some of those tips we've given about getting that, and it still feels right, one thing to note is, and we'll get you on the bike in a second, is how wide your handlebars can make a big difference to how far the reach is. Because if the handlebars are wider than your shoulders, and I'll show you a quick hack about how to measure that, they're out here, that affects the reach, and it can feel like it's miles away. So. Sometimes shortening your handlebars can make the reach feel much more affected just as much as shortening the, the stem, you know. One thing I would say though is that, you know, it's a, it's a horrible thing to say to someone you bought the wrong size bike and we don't want anyone out there to do that if we can. If you use those measures that we talked about, but like most bike companies now will register all their geometry online and often have a little fit application tool, yeah? So if you put in your height, your inseam height, do all the measurements, they'll suggest what frame in their size range. Remember, all bikes are nearly measured differently. So it can be confusing jumping from one, uh, you know, like a 56 Specialized over to a 56 Giant. Sometimes it doesn't translate that well because the way they're, they're made. You, yourself at home, a little bit, I would do all the things that the bike you're interested in says to do online. The caveat to that is the people who are the worst of it are the ones who have that those are all designed for the normal distribution of, of morphology. So you, if you know you have short legs and a long back, or vice versa, long legs, short back, that's when you can get caught between frame sizes. Those people then have to manipulate things like crank length, front end cockpit, things like that to make that bike fit them. But there are adjustments that you can make to potentially get a poorly sized frame to fit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you, if, as long as you're not miles out, you know, for example, if, you, if you've got relatively short legs, if you drop your crank length off what it comes standard wise, you know, we know it doesn't make a difference to performance and they can adjust the saddle height effectively. Yeah, that can make that bike then fit for you, you know? I'll be honest, both of those have surprised me because I would not have checked either crank length or handlebar width. No, and why would you? <laughs> it's like, I, I wouldn't have done, you know, but um, your handlebar width, because I've already looked at it, is absolutely brilliant. I can show you there, but you, it, because uh, no, we've been doing this now four or five years with mere mortals, the feedback we get was exactly that. It's like, um, so normally in September, I get a load of emails from people who I've seen in, in the, in, early in the year saying they've gone onto their winter bike and they feel awful. And I say, have you changed your crank length like we did? And they go, no, 
and they come back and say, I can't believe how much of a bigger difference it makes. So it does. And you're starting to see Shimano release 160 cranks now. I think you'll see a graduation down because now we've unpacked crank length being you know, crucial to power. Power. It is in maximal cycling. That's team sprint, Chris Oil on the start line. And it is somewhat in very, very steep mountain biking. But in sub max cycling, me and you do, it doesn't. And if you think about it, that circle there, how big it is, yeah. that really, if that's smaller, it enables you to adopt different thing above it, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's what I spend most of my life doing is manipulating that to help people. Yeah. Okay, so, so a key adjustment yes. that you think that people can make to get their bikes to fit better is handlebar width, yeah. right? So how can you tell whether your handlebars are the right width for you? Okay, so amongst all this fancy data capturing equipment, I've got a big orange pole. And if, you, if I put this there, yeah. what it should do is just go through the middle of your shoulder. And because you've learned to sort of roll your shoulders, it's just going outside. But th these are 38 bars, I've mentioned yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. pretty narrow bars. This handlebar suits you. So basically, if you, if you look to yourself in your mirror, basically your hand there should be in line with your shoulder, you know, your shoulder okay. joint here, okay? Um, and yours is. A lot of people, in my experience, come in, and just because the bikes come with a foot, if it's an exercise bike, you'll often come with 44 wide bars. If you're a big, chunky fellow like me, that's perfect, my hand's in line there. A lot of people aren't, though. And especially as you get better at cycling, and people shrink their upper bodies for aerodynamic reasons, lightness on the bike, they'll often start to roll inwards. And you feel, when I've been looking at the bike position, I'm like, why, why can't they get to handlebars? Their, their saddle setback seems right. They're only on the 90, 100 stem, but they're saying that, you know, they can't get that nice little elbow bend there where they're relaxed, it's very locked out. Like that. And you just look at it and it's, it's because the handlebar's too wide. Because okay. people, I, what you don't remember is that how far I have to put my hand out there is part of the reach, isn't it? So if I ask you to come to here, yeah. that's going to be, that's further. Yeah, it's and not, we haven't changed anything about the front to back setup, it's just there. So I, I think, again, it makes a demonstrably big impact on comfort, you know? This is the beautiful thing that SRAM or Shimano have designed. Apparently took five years, 16 different hand positions. The most common thing I see, size is people come in here, yeah. and this will resonate with the crowd there, and they sit there, and I cannot get them to move onto the hoods <laughs> because either the saddle's in the wrong place, or quite often the handlebar's too wide. And you can tell it because there's loads of wear on the bar tape. Now, 16 different hand positions, but you choose to sit here with one. Yeah. That's madness. So whilst I don't care a damn whether you're down in the drops, on the, on the, I want you to be able to get to the hoods if you want to. And that's the game quite often. And the two things I see most commonly that would be, as we talked about earlier in the program, saddle setback, but yeah. often um, how wide the handlebar is. Here's the big free give me. As you know, I'm more about comfort, sustainability, and power. This makes a big difference to aerodynamics. So if you are riding too wide a handlebar, that make, you know, it is making you much less aero. So if, it, if, if it's going to be more comfortable and it's going to be less air, more aero, why not? Yeah. yeah. That's a really interesting point, though, about wear on your bar tape. Mm. So, so that feels like a classic sign then. So if someone has got a wear, a excess wear on the corner of the handlebars, yep. then they need to do something They're about They're quite often doing exactly what you're doing there. And I, like I said, I don't mind if you, if you want to sit there, and I often sit there, you know, just uh, have a different hand position. But on question, they'll often say, but can you get to the hoods? And they go, no, it just doesn't feel feels too far away. But the hood is where you're meant to be spending most of your time for comfort reasons, braking and so so forth. So yeah, that's a real easy hit to find. I honestly say, you know, been open three years, I've only told three people that bought the wrong size bike. So it's not as common as people think, yeah? but people get really worried and stressed about it, you know? Okay, right. so so if you if you can't reach the hoods, then look at your handlebar width. Yep. Also the handlebar design, so how far I guess your yep. the reach is to the 100%, hoods. One hundred percent, yeah. And then and then also stem length. And yes. so as as long as your stem length you reckon is not shorter than about ninety, yeah. then you're kind of you're so okay. More relaxed, sort of like endurance gravel bikes, you can definitely come as short as 80. But the goal, the, the old rule we used to have is like 90 to 140 generally. If you're going beyond that, then that's a real telltale sign. With everything else is optimal, that the bike is either too small or too big for you, you know. One of the one of the problems that I encounter a lot when I'm ordering a bike for for filming is the is the, the stack, so how high the front end is. Yeah. And so I tend to want a lower stack than a lot of bikes give me. Yes. And then that means it's a bit shorter. But what are the warning signs that someone's got it wrong on the bike that they've bought? Either it's too high or too low for them. All right, yeah. So, um, Jim, most people, once again, Simon, I'm like you. <laughs> most people, because you're, 
you've ridden at a really high level, but we, the most problem we see is people have bought a, a very low stack bike, so it tends to be more like the race ones, aerodynamic, and they just haven't got the flexibility to get, you know, or the, or the strength to hold that position, you know, so it's so low down the front, their arms are locked out, they can't unlock their arms, it's just too low for them at the front. So. I think that comes back to goal setting when you're bowling. It's like, what are you going to do on the bike? You know. So if you come in to me and say, look, Phil, I want to be, I'm an ex-pro, which you are, and I want to be like a pro, this is ideal. Yeah, yeah. It's a low slung, quite long bike. Yeah? If you were saying to me, um, I'm new to cycling, but I really love it. Um, I'm going to be doing a Grand Fondo. I, I would seriously consider getting the most comfortable bike possible. And that is not something that someone's riding in the Tour de France. That is more like your endurance road bikes or even your gravel type geometry, where this, this the stack and reach is bringing you up here and making it easier for you to get on this bit here, get nice and secure, and therefore comfortable at the back end, you know? So you don't want the front end compromising the back end, so to speak, you know? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, yeah. so it does. So, so actually, if someone is feeling like they're too low, yeah then the simple fix, I guess, yeah. is to bring the stem up. So the first and foremost, I mean, it's a bit more difficult these days uh, in the integrated road, although these do um, these go wider and, and narrow, uh, narrow, don't they? Um, I would always say, whenever you buy a bike, do not get any of the steer of post cut, right? Leave it all on, all right? You can always go lower, and I would say, take it out, but do not cut it until you know you're happy. Once it's cut, that's it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you're in a dispensable. So my advice on anybody who's ever bought, going to buy a new bike is get it as high as you can at the front, first of all. Let, tell the shop or the environment, no, I don't want it cut, I want everything you've got on the front end. But before that, it's probably, I mean, I know it's about, I would always encourage people to go and sit on bikes, you know, and judge for themselves. If you go on it and feel comfortable, if, you, if you're, if you're not that into it, you're not sure about a bike, go and try it, you know? I would then trust your feelings, what we call comfort filter. You know, we make all, we have all this data here, which is fantastic and helps all and all, but how you interact with a bike, how that comfort filter, trust that feeling. If it feels comfortable, it's probably gonna be comfortable, yeah? Yeah, we should probably caveat this, shouldn't we, and say that for a lot of bikes now, you can't go and sit on them before you buy them because you buy them online. Yeah. So how do you know then what size to get? I would definitely do the online fitting system that most of these bikes have invested in, yeah? See where that's coming up and see if that's relevant to them. If you've got an existing bike that you're pretty happy with, yeah, you can check the geometry of that bike compared yeah. to the one it's suggesting. Now, if it's in the ballpark, you know, five, 10 mil different here and there, and it looks like you're gonna be able to get that white right, yeah? If it's massively different, then you, am I choosing the wrong size bike there, the wrong size frame, or the wrong type of bike form what want to be doing? Yeah. So yeah, I think measuring your existing setup yourself, comparing that to what you can what you can see online, going through the online measurement process, maybe doing some of the things we've done here, so you understand like your inseam length, some so all those online tools will just you know say this can achieve this saddle height, and then you got that. Email or contact the company that you're buying the bike off, and tell them if you've got any worries or concerns. Some of them are much better these days about getting that customer satisfaction right, and yeah, it might be like they say, okay. It looks like you're literally on the height between a medium and a large. These are the things you could consider changing after the bike fit to make either of these work. Okay, well, Phil, thanks so much for, for talking us through it. Hopefully, that has allayed some of your fears if you are worried about having the wrong size of bike. Give this video a big thumbs up to say thanks for Phil for his time today. And let us know in the comments section as well what you think, whether or not you were worried and whether or not you have managed to fix your bike fit issues.